Welcome back everybody to our final We Play Dota 2 match for today. It's the opening for Group D and we've got Roxkiss up against Poseidon. We just saw Roxkiss. They managed to get a 2-0 victory in their opening match against Scary Faces. They're looking to continue their lead in Group D. I'm going to be joined by Vikramond. Are you with me, Vic? How are you doing? I'm great, gods. I'm excited cool. for this game. Cool. Well, uh, we'll take a quick look at... Uh, well, actually, we'll hop ourselves in this game. Uh, we can take a quick look at the standings here just to give you guys a bit of an idea of where we are. Uh, with our group stages. Uh, group C, we recently rounded off. Group C being won by Liquid in a somewhat surprising fashion. They tied the series 1-1 with Alliance, but unfortunately for Alliance, they lost a game to the South American team, Revenge, which put them in second place. Yeah. As for Group D, though, we've got Na'Vi, Fnatic, uh, Roxkiss, Poseidon, as well as Scary Faces. So the two big names, Na'Vi, Fnatic, but then there's Roxkiss, who really are your dark horses in this group, it feels like. I agree, and now we're going to sort of see... I mean, they, they had an easy way to start. They went against probably the team that people least know in the group, SFZ. Yeah. Uh, didn't have too much trouble getting 2-0 there. But this is going to be more of a test. Poseidon are definitely a more established team. It's three of the five players that were the Virtus Pro team at TI3. They did okay in their most recent tournament. So they were in Star Ladder Season 7. They went 6-9. and nine. I feel as if it's a team still in search of an identity somewhat. Uh, for instance, they rely very heavily on picking Naga Siren, despite having a very bad record with her. So here they actually don't get her. Uh, Rock secures her first, but Poseidon is only 2-6 and six with the hero, so perhaps <laughs> it's a blessing in disguise that they didn't pick it. Yeah, it, it seems something that all the teams are starting to like first pick now. I mean, ever since sort of Alliance popularized the hero during TI3 and kind of showed sure. its true potential, but not all the teams are using and actually winning Radiant that many games with. Back. Yeah. And, uh, of course, Poseidon have a lot of experience with this hero and experience playing against it, so uh, maybe I guess that's the upside. Yeah. And they're a team that actually runs Naga in... They're, they're one of the few teams that still runs her in a one or a three position rather than just the uh, five position that she's been run much more frequently these days. Uh, so Rocks here, they get the Chen and the Naga. Very good defensive. Uh, if they want to pick up a relatively hard carry, I feel that this is definitely a composition in which you can do so just because of the amount of protection that you provide. Uh, but it's not mandatory either. Chen, of course, is able to roam and gank. Uh, Naga, with that ensnare, can lead to kills depending on who else you're running. So uh, they have a nice versatile composition. And Poseidon have something they can be happy with too. Uh, Xi really, really likes Nature's Prophet. I think it's his favorite hero. Yeah. And of course, uh, Illidan likes playing Weaver too. How do you? Is it? It's not KSI. Do you pronounce? You pronounce his name some some other way. So I used to C? say KSI, and okay. then I was told that it's that it's just meant to be pronounced straight up. So C. Kasi. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll take your word for it. You're the 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 resident uh, Russian expert. So. <laughs> well, his name isn't in Cyrillic, but no. I, I have been told that it's that it's okay. Kasi. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I think Poseidon give away a bit more about what they're gonna do with an off lane Nature's Prophet and Weaver, most likely your safe lane carry. Whereas Roxkis, sure they they're showing their two supports here, but they can go absolutely anywhere as far as what kind of core heroes they want to go. Surely you've got a Chen, but I don't feel like they have to go uh, for an early mid-game push strat. They can just no, use no, this no. and pick up a carry. As for Poseidon, though, that's more like your standard Nature's Prophet split pushing, having a Weaver come to fights early, and just going for a stronger sort of mid-game oriented play. Yeah, I think both teams have pretty open drafts. Poseidon a little less so. They do need to focus heavily on supports. The downside of what they did here with taking... Securing the Nature's Prophet and the Weaver in the first phase is maybe you could have gone with things besides the Weaver in phase two, but now the supports are being very heavily targeted by rocks. So they take out both the Visage and the Rubik, two quite high tier supports. And actually, the removal of the Rubik uh, frees up rocks to take all sorts of things that maybe they would be uh, less willing to grab if the Rubik was still on the table. Yeah, absolutely. Those uh, big AoE type heroes who can play the solo roles, be it yeah. your Magnus, whatever it may be. Yeah, an Enigma or something. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, the timing Roxas do still need just like some. We've seen, I guess, a, a different, different a couple of different carries coming out from uh, Nexus, but uh, the Gyrocopter, I guess, the big one that's still in the pool, which I think is still very effective, uh, especially with a, a Naga Siren plus one lane. You're not going to get a lot of protection there. Gyro pretty self sufficient. He doesn't need a ton of actual support to help him out, and that leaves Chen sort of free to just use his jungle, get his farm and levels up before coming out to push. Yeah. And uh, one guy I want to keep an eye on is this fifth player for Rocks, is the stand-in Sola. Yep. So I, I'm told that this is not, in fact, Solo, even though it would be kind of funny if it was. Uh, I, I think, so they said in the lobby chat that it's actually a, a relatively new player uh, who lives in Rezan, which is a city uh, 
southeast of Moscow somewhere. I forget exactly where. <laughs> but actually, Poseidon secured the Enigma. But I did want to say that in the last game against um, uh, SF SFZ, Solo played an amazing Rubik. Yeah. Like his Rubik that game was really really good. So we'll see how he how he happen, how he plays on Naga Siren. But he could be a little bit of an X factor in this game, especially if his positioning is very careful. He's gonna make this Enigma such a not fun time for JOTM or whoever's gonna be playing it. Yes. Um. I. I mean, I'm not totally updated. Do Roxas have a fifth player who's just missing today, or is are I, they? Are I don't they only think so. I think roster? they have a four person roster and okay. they're sort of trialing different people yeah. in that fifth slot. Okay. So Solar may be going to be the, uh, depending on how things go, could be that fifth player for them. All right. Well, Enigma, it seems most likely going to be just a straight up jungle here. Yeah, I guess. Poseidon, they see a jungle chain and think, well, there's not any chance of an offensive trialing, really. We can get away with a jungle Enigma and be really, I mean, it's it's greedy, but it's all it's very calculated. Like, they know they can just, they only need a dual lane uh, in their safe lane. Enigma is not going to get contested in the jungle. So this is something that they feel pretty confident in. Luna for rocks, so okay. looking to go a little bit aggressive, I feel. Uh, I, I don't mind this Luna pick. I think she's a hero that for a while was almost completely forgotten. Now we're seeing people kind of playing with her a little more. Uh, if you get a good... If you can hit your levels, mainly. If you can hit 11 very quickly. And if, again, they have abundant protection for the Luna to hit her levels in her first couple items. This is the sort of hero that can just take over a mid-game. And now they do have basically three heroes that as long as Chen has the right creeps, all can interrupt Enigma. So even though they didn't manage to secure it for themselves, and even though they don't have a Rubik, uh, this is going to have to be a pretty careful play from Enigma to make sure he actually makes a big impact. And uh, Luna can also just destroy Weaver. And you can see Poseidon, hmm, Good interesting choice with the Alf. It could be a support, but I want to say it's maybe going to be their so. solo mid, or do you think it's support? Ooh, yeah, it could be mid. Uh, hmm. I think they just this. If you have an, it's, that if it's support, it's a five position alchemist. Like I see support alchemist like as a four position, but a hard support alchemist. Right, right. Uh, I think it's. A bit I mean, lacking. you need like medallion kind of. Yeah. Alternatively, you, you put Weaver boots. mid. Like Weaver can easily go mid with yeah, the alchemist. Yeah, you can Weaver mid. So. Uh, Tame my wild actually plays a quite a good Weaver mid. Yeah. Uh, it's not one of his absolute best five heroes. Um. But actually, in general, I like for Poseidon, I like for these players to sort of try to reach outside their comfort zone as much as possible, because I think one of the reasons the team has struggled to hit that next level is they do rely on these safe picks, like Puck for Tame My Wild and even Nature's Prophet for Xe, but Gyrocopter for Airman. And I just think they fall into that, and it's not actually as strong as maybe they think it is, or they rely on it too heavily. So yeah, let's put Tame My Wild on the Weaver mid. Uh, this is a very greedy lineup, but uh, if Roxkiss can't really punish it, why not, I guess? Alright, well, Magnus, there we go. The, the Rubik banned out. This is what yeah. was open for Roxkiss. So, Solar Mid Mag could be coming out from Roxkiss, and this gives them a very scary looking team fight. Another it does. Something else to lock down the Enigma, or by RPing him when he's casting Black Hole, not very possible because you have to get so close, so you're likely going to get caught in it. But it just gives them a, a big team fight ultimate of their own to use to initiate with. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I like the Magnus pick. I think it, you know, uh, they notice that there's a lot of team fight coming out from Roxas, so uh, they, they realize that they want to sort of equalize those odds a little bit, and I, I don't think it's bad. I think it's a, a strong pick for them here. My only concern is if Tema Wild plays very well mid, he can give Magnus a run of it. Like, if he mostly dodges, if he gets relatively early boots and manages to dodge a lot of uh, shockwaves while constantly harassing, Magnus could hit Blink fairly late. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, we'll see uh, what the last couple here is going to be out. And yeah, getting that blink up on Mag does seem fairly crucial here because they can't really... They have no other good initiators in general. Sure, you've got a Song of the Siren, but it's unlikely to be able to use that as a reliable setup, especially early on with the long cooldown. So Mag needs to do as well as he can at the middle lane. Draw <laughs> Tr Ranger banned out. So uh, this is a funny ban. So first of all, they think that the Alk might indeed be a support. Yeah. Uh, secondly, Dro is actually Dro is a hero that Poseidon has been playing with recently. Okay. In yeah. fact, in the last game between Roxas and Poseidon, they did run a Drow Ranger unsuccessfully. But later on, they beat Aspera uh, fourteen to zero with a fifteen minute Satanic wow. on Drow. So it's no joke. Uh, they they do consider this hero. They rate it a little more highly than a lot of people do. I don't think it fits into this composition because I, I believe in the power of the Pentacore, but I, maybe not that much. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're here because that Drow Ranger band would just like flew over my head. I'm thinking, what? How does that? How does that work? Like, yeah. You've Granted, got... I don't think it fits here, but yeah. I, I do understand. It's almost like a, yeah, yeah like a semi-respect band. Yeah. Well, Venomancer gonna be the pickup instead. So, this is kind of like 
a last-ditch support effort. I, it doesn't really add a whole lot. It gives you strong lanes, maybe a bit of a ganking potential, but it's almost where you'd rather have, like, a Jakiro or something if you just want, like, an actual good, reliable support who can do a lot more at all stages of the game. Because Venomancer, great in the first 5-10 minutes, after that, does not offer a whole lot. Like, the one thing he can do is... I mean, Plague Ward stack, that stack defense is really nice. For sure. I I don't know about the Veno either. I don't feel that... I mean, maybe it can guarantee you a big... It, it, like, make sure that your unstable concoction basically hits for the full duration and timing. Yeah. But uh, I'm not so sure, and especially considering the fact that Magnus will now be run in an offlane capacity with Tinker rotating into the mid. Venomancer is singularly incapable of pressuring Magnus. Like, it, you really, really need a stun. You, you desperately need a stun. So... I'm just not sure what impact the Venomancer will really have. I feel that Venomancer, he's a hero with potential, but he can also be somewhat of a trap pick. Uh, he did famously lose both teams in the TI3 Grand Finals a game, yeah. <laughs> pretty much single-handedly. So certainly it's a pick that is capable of trapping you into Ten thinking it's better than it is. I've seen Venomancer lose a lot of games over the last couple of weeks. I yeah. Very few come to memory where the hero, heroes actually won, and it's... I mean, generally it does pretty well in the laning stage, but beyond that, it just really struggles. Yeah. LG International picked it up in an absolutely catastrophic draft in uh, their own match against IG. That was one right. of the worst drafts I've just ever seen. I'm just shocked that LG International would even go for something like that. Yeah, that was that was a really grim draft, and I think he was in the uh, the LGD and Rattlesnake series too, also unsuccessfully. Okay, I vaguely remember that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about the Veno here. I mean, at least they didn't pick a fifth core, I guess. Although Veno, of course, is a carry, so maybe they did pick a fifth core. Yeah, well, um, we'll, we'll see how it fits in here. It is going to be uh, Poseidon looking to uh, make him fit into their lineup here. Do, do, do you think, we're, are we looking at the Weaver or the uh, Alchemist? I'm actually not sure who which of these is Tame My Wild. And what so it's it's Weaver team. mid, uh, so that's Tame okay. My Wild, X, X, X underscore X. <laughs> All right. I'll just, I'll go ahead and do Dire then. You could do Radiant because they actually easy, have yeah. real names. <laughs> so it'll be Timo Alp mid uh, as the Weeper. Sakura, who's their newest player, uh, not a Russian actually. I think I think Sakura is Scandinavian, uh, Swedish or something. He's and he's their newest member. He's going to be on the Enigma, probably in the jungle, which leaves C as the offlane nature's prophet would be my guess, and that means Jotam. Uh, he's going to be on the Veno top with uh, Airman or Illidan Stormrage eighty two ten, and it'll be top as Alchemist. All right, for the, the Radiant Team Rock Kiss, we've just seen them start things off with a 2-0 victory. It's going to be Nexus playing the carry Luna. BZZ on a solo mid Tinker. Sola, the stand-in, playing Nagasar and Yol, playing the Chen, and then Sedoi playing a, a side lane solo mag. So he's going to be going into that off lane. No reconnect button. Uh -oh. Well, he can manually, or maybe we'll make a remake. I don't know. Uh, depending on it. Jo John Tinker Ed is also a, a popular streamer, as far as I... I always see his stream yep. up on Twitch with a lot of viewers. Yeah, he's a pretty popular player. Um, he's really strong, honestly. I think he was a he was a pretty good pickup for Poseidon. Um, I, I still feel that this team is searching for an identity, but I think they're capable of being good. Like the nice thing about uh, him is he plays very selfless. I think Poseidon suffered a little bit from having like too many alphas, kind of, back in the Virtus Pro days. Like NS, Arsart wanted farm basically, and yeah. so did all their cores. And Tamo Wild wanted kills, and Illidan wanted kills, and Arsart wanted kills, and it was just sometimes they'd just go all in with everybody at the same time on different parts of the map, and everything would just fall apart. They had their uh, moments so of glory, like when they were running, they when they found that one strategy which really worked with them. Like generally, it was with that the the Luna and just going for these sort of mid game pushes and stuff. And yeah, they had some great success, but outside mm -hmm. of that, they struggled a bit. Definitely, and they were early on the OD train as well, very yes. very early. Yeah. Uh, I think we're remaking, I guess. Yeah, I, I've left the game, so I hope yeah. we're remaking. All right, yeah, I, I see the new lobby, so we're good. All right, um, right. Yeah, they were early on the OD boat, even as early as, like, uh, Premier League Season 4 finals, when uh, OD was still uh, a very fringe pick. They picked it on almost every game in those playoffs and did very well with it. They didn't end up winning, but they uh, gave, a lot, gave, like, Alliance. That was pretty much at the height of VP's power. Yes. They I, were really I close and skilled to Alliance at that point. After that, I I do think they actually fell off that much. I feel like other teams just up their teams game got a lot. Better. Yeah, yeah. And the the inherent um, the the weaknesses that were always there just ended up getting exploited by other teams. They were always the sort of yeah. team that, as long as they weren't super researched and could just go in and play what they wanted to play, they would do well against you. But uh, once you were in an environment like TI three where everybody scouts very heavily and like scrims with you a lot and like knows your tricks, they just couldn't make anything happen. Unfortunately. 
Yeah. They were one of the teams I was really looking forward to and actually like giving a good shot at being a wildcard team to actually maybe squeeze their way into the top eight at TI3. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, my prediction there fell, fell <laughs> short. <laughs> well, for what it's worth, Gods, I think you were one of the earliest on the orange boat for, for TI3, yes. right? Well, I, there you go. I, that was a big one. I predicted them top four from, from going and in. They, yeah, I, I think very few people rated orange higher than like 10th yeah. tenth, uh, tenth or so, and they, they were amazing. Yeah, I thought they would get probably four. I think I predicted them to get like fourth place behind like a Chinese team or two, and then Navi. Yeah. I didn't think Alliance would win it, to be honest, but they obviously oh, well, they proved me completely wrong. You <laughs> want a DK to win or something yeah. ridiculous. I, was, <laughs> I thought it would be I thought it'd be like DK, Navi, and... Um, I, would, I lost faith in IG quickly. Probably like yeah. Tong, Tong Fu, then Orange or something as Tong the Fu top were, four. were looking good, yeah. but they, uh... Yeah. Uh, Xbox East. Well, I'm, I'm converted. I'm now drinking the, the Alliance Kool-Aid. They are I'm drinking proven. the DK Kool-Aid, guys. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Alliance versus DK at MLG Columbus. That will be absolutely insane. That That's... I, I don't even know how to deal with that. At any rate, Rock's Kiss versus Poseidon will also be also be insane that or the poseidon lineup will just completely fall apart because i still can't really figure out how this works yeah it's it's weird also it's... um the the tinker pick is actually pretty great uh business perfect loves playing this hero and actually used to play him side lane carry quite a bit in the old rocks kiss uh the the pre-322 yeah. rocks kiss and so he's gonna play it mid and it kind of craps all over weaver doesn't it because march makes it difficult for weaver to last it because he has crappy range and laser is just going to blow it. It's like half his HP pool from level rank two onwards. Yeah, it it does work really nicely against the Weaver here, and I think just in general it's going to be a problematic hero for uh, Poseidon to deal with because I guess they can maybe look for some early rotations coming in from Venomancer. Uh, the Alchemist isn't going to leave the lane, but depending on who Alchemist is up against, if Venomancer can leave rotate for an early gank on Tinker, it it maybe helps him out, but. Even so, like, ganking a Tinker is really difficult, because March does a ton of damage. He also lasers you, and then suddenly misses start coming out, so... Yeah. It's, it's not going to be fun. It, w it will certainly not be fun. And the other thing is, because Poseidon have maneuvered themselves into a position where I really don't think they can go aggressive with their tri-lane, I don't know. I, maybe they put Enigma and try to duel Yul for his own jungle, but I just feel it's ex extremely chancy. So let's suppose that they don't, for instance. Let's suppose that it's just Nature's Prophet in the bottom. Yep. Uh, I feel as though Luna is just fine against Nature's Prophet solo, and in fact can maybe even level her um, Moonglaive earlier than she otherwise would to pick up free kills off the Treants. She farms well. Naga Siren doesn't even need to be there. So Naga Siren can split time between uh, getting levels in the jungle with Chen and actually stacking the Ancients for Tinker, who oh, could just yeah. build Laser March, and that'll be a, a really, really good Tinker. Yeah, I definitely look to. I, I definitely expect them to do a lot of stacking and pulling here. Chen Naga Saren as well. Like you get an early smoke, they can look to do maybe a rotation uh, to kill Weaver before Weaver hits level six. All they do need is a a Sentry Ward to get that kill. So yeah, so there's there's a number of different ways Roxkis can play their land. Whereas for Poseidon, I feel like there's not much potential for early game rotations. They can't really. No. They just have to farm their lanes and hope for the like the best come mid game time not to say their yep. lineup's bad they've got like some really good heroes they've got great team fight um they've got heroes who can win their lanes but there's like it's less of a coherent general plan it feels like definitely I i'm gonna look very closely at xi i feel like if xi has a good game this really odd lineup can basically come together okay because you do have amazing late game potential first off because you've got three heroes who all scale quite well one hero who scales better than a lot of people acknowledge, which is Venno. And even Enigma, I mean, he's never bad, right? So you have great late game potential. Um, questionable laning, good pushing, because uh, you, between Nature's Prophet and Enigma, you have excellent yeah. push. Venno is no slouch either, frankly, because he can just absorb a lot of tower hits with his Plague Wards. So uh, there's a lot of things that they can, and even, even Weaver, if he builds Desolator, for instance. So there's things that their lineup can do, and for what it's worth, if Roxas can't kill them in lane, I mean, they're going to be way ahead on XP just from the fact that they've cut a jungler and an off, like, three solo lanes, basically. Um, but that requires the to navigate the early the early game very well. And I do think that Roskis, yeah. if they want to, can put out a lot of pressure. I think the maybe the best thing that Poseidon should look to achieve in the early game is just to punish and zone out Sedoi as much as possible in the Magnus. Because I think if Magnus gets kept very under leveled and under farmed mm. he's not gonna be he's a very key hero for this rocks kiss draft like the the mid game stage so if he doesn't have arcane boots if he doesn't have blink dagger i think it gets a lot more difficult for rocks kiss to fight so i think for poseidon uh. they just say look venomancer forget pulling forget neutral sacking just make sure this magnus Maybe. gets no experience
That might be what they should do. I I agree. If they can zone out Magnus, things become a lot easier. But yeah. Cedoy's not the easiest player to zone out. He's a pretty strong offlaner, yeah. as we saw in the last series. Um, yeah. Magnus. It, it looks like, by the way, he's kind of fallen C... off as an offlane hero in some ways. But what's up? Yeah. Oh, unquestionably. But I think against this lineup, you can make it work. Uh, C is just redoing his keybinds. I guess okay. when he reconnected or restarted Steam, he lost all of his bindings, so he's fixing that. Okay. No problem. Looks like uh, they're ready to get things underway here, Poseidon. And uh, this is game one of our uh, second series of today. After this, we are done for today. We'll be back tomorrow, though. There's more WPC, Ace Dota 2 League, as well as we play action tomorrow in uh, Group D. But we'll introduce our teams once again, just for you guys to a bit of a reminder. It's going to be Sedoi playing the offlane mag. It's going to be Luna Nexus playing the Luna. Tinker BZZ is perfect. Going to be Sol in the middle lane. It's going to be Yol on the Chen. And then finally, Naga Siren, the stand-in, being played by Solar. Yeah, and, and Yul, by the way, pooling w even more than you usually see Chen pool. He's down to Clarity Smoke because he gave uh, a wow. bunch to BZZ to make sure he wins his lane and some to Cedoy. Yep. So very, very selfless Chen play there. Uh, looking off towards Poseidon, going to try to win their first game in we play with this very non-standard composition, so I know I'll be watching it very intently. In the top lane, uh, IS8210, this is Illidan Stormrage, a.k.a. Airman, on the Alchemist. Jonam. Will be the Medved will be playing the Venomancer as a support in this top lane. They're joined by Sakura, the newest member of Poseidon on the Enigma. In the middle will be Tame My Wild playing as a, a little dead emoji as the Weaver. And then bottom lane, the off lane will be handled by C on the Nature's Prophet. Well, C summon some trains from base here. He's going to look to send these out and try block that 30 second pull with them. So uh, just conserving as much of his mana as possible and. Contesting this pool is going to be the big thing for him. If he can stop it from spawning and uh, not let Naga, Siren, and Luna kill off those treants, he can actually do a decent amount in this bottom lane just to be annoying and harass as much as possible. But, I mean, that's kind of what Naga, Siren, and Luna are going to try and prevent him from doing. Oh, Sudoi hits a Gale. Was that a blind Gale? Oh, yeah, he had a ward. He, well, he had a ward. He had a ward, but that ward didn't actually see. Oh, yeah, true. How did, wow. Huh, just nice. straight up blind Gale. It was a blind Gale. I mean, he knew that he didn't... The mana didn't really matter yeah. because he had a, a regen sitting right there. Otherwise, that would be a terrible idea because oh, Venom is such bad mana. Solar finds the Observer Ward that was blocking, so nicely wow. played from him. That's that's quite big here because, like you say, Naga Siren can spend a lot of this early game stacking these Ancients for the Tinker. Mm. And I even Tinker, like, you, you stack it at 52 on your way to the runes when it's spawning. We can do that every two minutes as well. Yeah. I really like the... This was really very excellent Sentry Ward placement, by the way, because it covers a lot of the possible avenues. They knew where the Venu was standing, so they guessed that he either warded for just the rune, or he warded here, or here, or maybe even... Uh, there's a couple spots that will block the camp in this thicket of trees that are yep. very hard to deward. And this Sentry will capture all of those. So that was very nice play by, um, by Sola. Alright, well, he's just going to swing back towards the bottom lane now to... Uh... To rejoin the Luna here, who so far just had a sort of 1v1 matchup against Nature's Prophet. As a result, Nature's Prophet not getting zoned out, and has spent the entire time also blocking the uh, the neutral spawn. So not going to see any pulls yet from Naga Siren. And uh, Nature's Prophet KSI will be forced back for a little bit here, but he knows it's this is just a, a Naga Siren who he can trade hits with. Especially considering Naga Siren has no stout shield or anything. Oh yeah, for sure. And Sola actually hasn't chosen what he wants to level first yet either, so we'll, we'll have to see if... How badly he wants to actually try for a kill or something. But for now, it should be just yeah. fine for Xe. My bigger concern is Tame My Wild in the mid. In fact, he's going to wow, die. Wow, he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> the Sentry Ward. He knew there's a Sentry Ward as well. I think it was still just a level 1 laser getting that kill. Uh, yep. So that's what we talked about. Tinker, very able to pressure Weaver. He knows that uh, the Sentry just helping out a lot. And Tame Wild always plays up. Always, always, always. So they're, they're taking advantage both of the hero and the player. So yes. just look at how hard that laser is just damaging. I don't know. Oh, I, that, I, was, that was his bottle gold as well. He still hasn't actually got his bottle. Oh, God. That's brutal. Yeah. In fact, Sola's now here with an Invisiroom. Oh, this is a this could just be Tame Wild dead again. I guess he wants to go for the Ensnare here. The Riptide yeah, is definitely. nice. Not, unless you can just straight up burst him down, but I think the Ensnare may be... Yeah, Ensnare to lead things off. They're going to drop a March. I actually don't think they get the kill. That wasn't as well executed as it could have been. Yeah, that was kind of mediocre. I, I feel that it could have waited longer for yeah. the Ensnare, probably. Wait yeah. for Weaver to push up a little bit, and Tinker could almost start off with like some right-click harass before the Ensnare, because you've got the Sentry, so yeah. you can Ensnare him after the Shikuchi gets cast. Oh, God. Stormcrafter as well. This is horrible. It interrupted a salve, I think. Uh, this is just... Terrible, terrible. Oh. Tame my wild, poor guy. He's got bottle now, though. That's yeah. the good news. 
but he's gonna just gonna have to straight up. He's gonna be bottle crawling for a long, long time to recover from this this bad yeah. start. I really think they should have probably just lasered and then he shikuchis and you immediately hit him with the the mule with the yeah. ensnare because you have the sentry. It's not like there's an issue of him juking. It may have even been better to go for the riptide. If, right. if, if especially if he pushes forwards, you riptide, you laser, and get a right click with the minus armor. You get oh, you get two right clicks. <laughs> oh. He's at forty. Well, bottle on its way. Yep. Tough, tough Midas, time here. Very quick Midas, by the way, for Illidan. Yikes. Well, it's makes just his profit. Have it at, at bottom four. lane is being dived. The KSI may take a fall. There's a Riptide in the second here. He's not even going to use it. He's going to die for this kill, but that's worth it. Sure. Dyer even getting the kill. He almost actually lived because he almost mirror imaged uh, before the tower hit, but not yeah. quite. Well, Nature's Prophet immediately respawns TP's back towards his bottom lane, but nicely played to uh, get, that, yeah. get that solo kill as a support. And he got killed by the Dyer, so it's not like he gave anything to Poseidon, because he didn't even get a hit in, I guess. Well, Weaver's going to hope for a 4-minute rune, gets it as well, so... Take my okay. wild getting a bit lucky there, but uh oh bottom lane, KSI getting ganked out again. There's a Centaur stun coming in from the Chen, there's a Riptide as well, plenty of damage to bring down Nature's Prophet here, and he just dies twice in a row. Yeah, seemed like a pretty decent roll on the Test of Faith there too, just making it even easier. Yeah. Well, Alchemist has his Midas at top lane, 4 minutes, 15 seconds it arrives, and... This is going to be pretty good for him. He probably wants... He hasn't actually used it yet. Use it, man. Just, <laughs> I think he wants a big neutral creep, but yeah, you're just going to use it right away on a, a normal creep. Get that gold up, but... He's doing pretty well in this top lane, and Venomancer, as, sort of, as said, you can just punish a mag as an off lane hero. This is not the, the most... Uh, I mean, he's, he's hard to kill, but it, he can't actually stay in experience range against someone right. like a Venomancer, so he's still just level 2 in a bit. Yeah, I think you had mentioned that they would probably sacrifice a little bit of leveling on the Veno just to make sure that they managed to zone mag. And that's worked out brilliantly because uh, Cedoy stuck down at level 2. All he has is boots, so he, even though he was pooled regen from Yol, he's completely burned through all of it. And I don't think he can credibly defend this tower either. He doesn't even land a hit on the Eidolon, so those will split. Uh, oh, that's unfortunate. They didn't quite split before he managed to... Um, I'll get this tower regardless, and this is one tower, they may even just go for a second tier 2 tower here. Who can actually rotate? Tinker, not really. Naga, Siren, no. No one can actually rotate through. This Maybe is going to be two quick towers for Poseidon, I think. I think they'll probably move Tinker over. Okay. I don't think it's worth it to let the tier 2 go, because especially because Alchemist went Midas. Yep. Well, Alchemist, Chenling, a son. He's actually going to stun himself up here, so this is even more incentive for Tinker to show up at this top lane. Drops a march, and this should be the end of this push. Well, unless they want to wait till uh, this March goes down, because March, of course, has a very long cooldown, so... It does, and he doesn't have rearm. Uh, I mean, typically, makes perfect yeah. sense, but... Well, here's the thing, now that they... Because they defended the Tier 2, Cedoy now has the opportunity to get basically two creep waves worth of XP. So, I actually think Busy's decision-making was very good here, even if it doesn't result in a kill. Yep. Meanwhile, bottom lane, there is a counter push coming out from uh, the Radiant team from Rock's Kiss. They're going to try to get this T1 tower uh, to sort of counter what was going on at top, but yep. looks like no no defense is coming on this either. Yeah, uh, and that doesn't really surprise me. I don't think this game has quite reached the point at which both yeah. teams are very happy with like full 5v5 interactivity. I mean, Enigma's been leveling well. Keep in mind, he has black holes, so it's quite dangerous to go up against Poseidon right now, even if you would want to due to the early Midas from Alchemist. Tinker's now back to the top lane, trying to slow down this push again. This time he has got Rearm, picking up a Sora and getting the Rearm at level 7. And once again, pushing them back. Meanwhile, bottom lane, two towers yeah. picked up by Rock's Kiss, and they're actually not done. They can just keep on pushing here. They're going to force TPs back at least. Yeah, Nature's Prophet shows up bottom. Do other heroes even have the ability to come and defend? It looks like Rock's Kiss, well, Nexus is going to stay around. He's going to say, hey, look, who's actually here at this bottom lane? He sees the Prophet. Mm -hmm. Now he probably decides, okay, I've got to back off. Yeah, I think that was well played by Rocks because they end up a tower ahead despite starting their push later. Yeah. So uh, that really just goes to show you how annoying Tinker is to push against. Um, fun little anecdote, I was pubbing the other day and they had two people abandon and Tinker held off my team for 35 minutes in a 3v5. And I was just like, I hate this hero. Yeah. But I mean, he's really, really good at anti-push. So he's, he's able to protect the tier two there and still be winning in mid. I mean, Tame My Wild had a lot of time to catch up. And he's still not even caught up on last hits. Yeah, well, uh, as it stands, Alchemist uh, pretty much even on CS with the Luna, but Alchemist having the, the Grievous Greed to work in his favor, as well as the Midas Gold. His, Midas. his general farm is going to be pulling away from the Lunas uh, fairly soon. But Yeah, I, I think Illidan is the big bright spot for Poseidon. They have they have drafted a lineup, and Roxas has drafted a lineup, but Roxas can't really interfere with him at this point. 
Yep. So he will be able to freely farm. To I think the Midas was a good decision in this case because he knew that it would be protected and he the game will probably last long enough that he can make it worthwhile. Okay, well, uh, so Doi now up to level 5. So as an off and this mag is the offlane. He's actually... What helps him out is the fact that they get those two towers, because that pretty much gives him like a 9-10 minute arcane's boots. You really need the arcane boots on mag to just even pull off your full combo, so he'll have those fairly soon, all thanks right. to uh, the tower gold. Yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely fantastic. I think eventually they can probably push the tier 1 mid as well. Uh, certainly Weaver isn't going to be doing much to stop that. Look at how much the march just chews him. Yeah. This Weaver mid pick really got uh, kind of stuffed by the Tinker pick, I think. He's done okay. The only reason he's doing as well as he is is because BZZ left the lane two or three times just to handle the top lane. Yeah, I just worry for him. Like, even come mid game time, he's not really able to do a whole lot in fights. Like, you can't actually fight into March and Machines as Weaver because of how squishy you are. So, yeah. compare that to uh, the rest of the, the Poseidon team. They can do a whole lot more against a Tinker mid, but Weaver's going to be made very ineffective. I absolutely agree. And he's also um, going to feel a lot of pressure to go Lincoln Sphere which is a fine item for Weaver, but it certainly means that they won't have that alternative damage source. There's going to be a long period of time which Tame My Wild's first priority is just going to be living, and he's not going to be doing much of anything else. Oh, there's a rotation towards mid. They were looking for this Tinker, but this Tinker has a haste rune in. And there's a RP yeah. Magnus sitting in the trees. Oh, and Magnus is quite happily going to use that BZZ as bait if he can find the opportunity to do so. Well... But now, they're not going to go on uh, mid lane. There's a Venomancer lurking around. He's actually going to block off these Ancients here, it looks like. Gets a nice Observe Ward in. It has That's been... a really good block spot. Yeah. Has been blocked... Uh... Sorry, has been stacked once already, but... That's gonna... Still, uh, it's not going to be the easiest thing to deward because uh, you, can't, you can't actually see it from here unless you cut the trees. So they'll have to... Um, they'll have to notice that Veno cut a tree here, I think, to actually counter it. It's pretty tricky. Yeah. Pretty sneaky, sis. <laughs> Tinker's got his boots of travel regardless, though, so, uh, well, in, in about 50 gold. Yep, gonna but he's really going to want something like, if he gets uh, Blink and Fast Scythe, he can punish Alchemist for free, for farming anywhere, and he can punish Nature's Prophet even more effectively. Well, there we go. He's got his boots of travel gold now, and uh, meanwhile, on the uh, Dire side, it looks like, are they, and yeah, they're Ancient Stacking as well, so they've got the Alchemist, they can uh, have him come into play soon, and what's he actually picking up? He's going straight for his Shadow Blade here, picks up the Claymore, the completed Shadow Blade will be up in probably one to two minutes time as well on top of that, so this is going to be a yeah. very fast Alchemist farm. Yeah, this is actually shaping up to be a pretty interesting game. It's been a little bit quiet. Most of the kills have just been punishing C in the off lane. But he's now, I mean, he has Midas. He's going to go Shadow Blade as well, I bet, now that Alchemist has it. And they're going to have a pretty mobile composition that's capable of split pushing, and if they ever win a fight, they're really capable of death pushing off that fight. So I, I think Poseidon wasn't the greatest laning phase for them, especially for Weaver, but they've made it work. Uh, props to them for using the Enigma, basically uh, selling a level on the Enigma just for that really big push down the top, yep. which forced Tinker to rotate over, which created a lot of space for Weaver. So I actually think it was really good crisis management from Sakura and his team. Oh, as for Roxkiss, it seems to me they maybe want to start actually forcing the issue a bit with like their 5-man soon, at least once Luna has BKB, because yeah. Luna's not going to be a late-game carry who can out-carry an Alchemist, but Luna will shine around this 15 to 20 minute mark when you have a Chen with mech uh, as well as the triple creeps, you have a mag with a blink dagger. So they'll hit this timing where they have blink on mag, BKB on Luna, blink on Tinker as well, and Naga Siren, all you need is level six. And at that point, Poseidon might not be all that strong yet. They'll have the Shadow Blade on Alchemist, but as long as you have Sentry Wards, Alchemist can't use that Shadow Blade to initiate. So I think that's right. where Poseidon could be in a little bit of trouble. Unless they can survive that five, 10 minutes, then in the late game, they're looking a lot better. I, I definitely agree with you. One of, and I, I do think that they should try to find a timing. The slight issue with that is that Tinker is just such a greedy hero and peaks so late. Like, he really wants a lot of items. Oh man, Tame My Wild. Taking an absolute beating. Actually, it could still be in trouble. Oh, yep, RP. they're gonna RP for yeah. it. Well worth it, I mean, this early on in the game. You're just trying to get any solo kill you can get to just pull away from your opponents. Yeah. You're not really looking to go for, like, all-out game-ending pushes for the time being, or even trying to take roast, so... I, I completely agree with you, and furthermore, uh, RP is less than half the cooldown of Black Hole. Yep. So you basically get two RPs for Black Hole, so you can do a team fight and a game. And they get an Insair on Jodam in mid lane, and he gets brought down by a, a Luna Lucent team. Think you're going to be teeping in as well, so... Well, they blow an RP, but they, they just say, okay, we'll just get another kill. We'll even push down this middle lane. They get a T1 tower. Do they yeah. go for the tier 2 as well? It looks like they decide maybe against it. And BKB is basically done, I think, now for Nexus. And this gives them a very, very strong opportunity. He's not 11 yet, so he does not have that rank 2 Eclipse. But I think just with the BKB alone, which they could get off of Tower Gold. And yeah, I mean, what's Weaver going to do, right? Like, 
No, absolutely nothing. And they've already got the Sentry Ward here, mostly for the Weaver, but this is going to come exactly as Alchemist picks up his Shadow Blade. He's probably thinking, hey, I can initiate him with my Shadow Blade, catch him by surprise before they have Sentry Wards, but Sentry Wards are already there waiting. Rox is being very, very good and consistent with this sentry warding and i mean that's just for the weaver so alchemist actually shows his shadow blade and now rocks gets no they're gonna have they have to consistently have this detection yeah so one thing is that i do think that illidan needs to rush bkb pretty quickly yeah he, he's gonna want something bigger like big plays items like cuirass or something but i don't know if that's a choice that he can possibly make i think bkb is basically not optional just to live through the the tinker situation and luna and he's going to be forced to teamfight, like, right now. Because uh, Rock's Kiss right. have almost got all their key items. They're just a couple hundred away from the BKB. A couple hundred away from the Mag Blink Dagger. And they can get that just by pushing towers. Like, they're, they're happy to yeah. go for these tier 1 towers, even before these items are picked up. For sure. And one more tower. The I love these pickups of the outer towers just being bang boom for Rock's Kiss. Because, as you mentioned, Gods, even though Sidoy uh, had nothing in lane, he's going to have Blink after another tower or two. Yeah. 14 minutes blink uh, is like your offlane Magnus. You got zoned out really hard. And BZZ Tinker, we actually see like Tinker being a decent split pusher because he just spams everyone down, gets some really low HP. And Poseidon, you can't really fight into a push where Mark's machine is on the ground. Oh, yeah. Gonna realize very quickly there's a Sentry Ward there. And sure, Alchemist has a fast Shadow Blade, but he can't actually Sidoy use it. Right this. Now. He just used it on Team My Wild again. And Weird Skewer. Doesn't actually get the kill as well. Yeah, I don't know about that. Those are some odd choices. Well, Tame my wild. He's got the full magic wand. Not gonna pop it just yet. He's gonna, he's gonna be okay. But Magnus, yeah. what are you doing, Sidoy? Yeah, that was really weird from Sidoy, honestly. And I've just been praising this player all day today, so I feel like I can give him a little crap. That was pretty dumb. <laughs> but I mean, they're fine. They'll still push down this tower. They forced. I mean, the thing is, uh, okay, sleep. Yeah, this could actually be an easy kill on Venno. Nice sleep. They've got the Eclipse as well from Luna here, which I think we'll be seeing in Pop. They, can they, yeah, they see the Alchemist. There's an ensnare on him. They actually got the Alchemist instead of the Venom. That's much better. bigger kill for them. <laughs> You'd much rather have that, yeah. certainly. And the thing is, Weaver did have to leave, so that opened up the space a lot. It was a little bit of a miscommunication, maybe, from Poseidon, because Enigma and Weaver both left, but yeah. uh, Venomancer and Alchemist both stayed. And actually... Weaver in trouble. He's, yeah, he's, he's probably up. okay. Okay. Time lapse was on cooldown, but uh, there wasn't enough follow-up damage there. Luna had already TP bottom. I think if Luna stayed with a Lucent Beam, maybe you get the kill, but... Well. We see Nature's yep. Prophet pick up a Shadow Blade, but there's already so much invis that Gem and Sentries is already being invested in for Rock's Kiss. Right. So this Shadow Blade, not like quite as good as other games where like if you're the only invis and you're forcing them to get Gems, Sentry Wards, and Dust, it's a yeah. much better investment. But I mean, I still think it's the right item to go for. It's just not as strong as it would in other games. I, I, I mean, the fact that the Enigma already has the um, the mechanism means that I'm, I'm more or less fine with it. I think yeah. if Enigma were going for, like, Fast Blink or something, then that would be a different story, or Fast BKB. But because he already picked up the mechanism, I don't think there's really a better choice than Shadow Blade. That said, I think you made a great point. They're already investing all the money into... A gem now, even. Yeah, right, exactly. So. Uh-oh. Tim Awala, could he be in trouble again? There's only five seconds until the next RP. He's gonna be okay. I See. guess. Oh, huh. gets Chen not the really the That's... best here to have the gem on. When you're five man pushing, it's fine. But when you're trying to pick off the nature's profit split pushing, it's not Chen who's right. ganking him. That's where you want it on. Probably the mag. Yeah. Maybe the tinker. I, I, would, I like the mag idea. Yeah. yeah. We'll see if he passes it over. I think it makes a lot more sense on the mag right now. But yeah. maybe Chen just sort of uh, valuing his own survivability. But if they're five man pushing, it doesn't really matter who it's on. Chen is perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, definitely. Advantage. They'll get this I tier just... two. They can go Roshan if they really want. But. They could. I mean, they're getting all the outers. Yep. Uh, I actually do expect them to do that. Oh, <laughs> didn't quite finish the job, but Nexus comes back for it. Um, yeah, they could take Roche. I think that's the right next target for objectives. Well, for Poseidon, it's it's split push for days. That's really their only way back in, into this, and they're just trying to counter push as well. Like Nature's Prophet just TPing to that T1 mid tower, going for a bit of backdoor damage. But uh oh, he needs to be careful. He's kind of trapped here in the enemy jungle. He can TP out at the moment. And yeah, he's going to do that. He's going to TP towards the top lane. Meanwhile, bottom lane, we've, uh... Does he actually have an escape out of this? RP just can be used, and that's an Negative. easy, easy kill. They didn't even need the gem for that. They didn't. They just used really good synchronization of... Or, no, they did move it to the, the yeah. Magnus. But yeah, they, it, it wasn't required, but it is nice that they moved it. So 7-1 to one now, the score for Roxkiss. And I think you do see some of the weaknesses of Poseidon's lineup here. Like, what... Precisely, and I'm not saying anything against uh, JOTM, who I actually rate quite highly as a player, but what the hell did Venno do this game? 
that have been a non-fact. He zoned out the mag, but any support in the world can do that. Maybe yeah. not as well as Venno. Like, Venno, obviously, uh, one of the best level 1 supports. Yeah, but... more damage, but you could do it with Crystal Maiden yep. or Jakiro. Shadow Demon. Jakiro in fact, it could be, be better with Shadow Demon. Yeah, Shadow Demon would be really nice here. I'm, I'm really surprised by this Venomancer pick, and... Well, I I think in general this this just I mean we we, we quickly caught on that this dire draft like it, they've got good heroes they've got some good lanes but there's no real clear game strategy for them like yeah. what are they actually achieving? I I mean I appreciate it in some respect because like I said I think that to get better Poseidon have to put themselves out of their comfort zone and get a little weirder but I'd love for it to be weird drafts that actually work and I I would not love for it to be weird drafts that just kind of yeah. are ineffectual in every capacity. Well, here we go for Roshan now, and uh, with this, we'll see, they just picked up a Luna. This is a Luna, not just BKB now, has the Yasha as well. Mantis will give them even more pu pushing power, and that's exactly what it seems they want to be going for here. The Acid Spray does get dropped down. I have to see if this Dire Team want to go in. They drop the Swarm as well on the Weaver. Not actually going to clip onto anyone. Actually finds the Mag, so... Not going to see any Blink anytime soon, but this Mag also has a Haste Rune, so... I don't really think Poseidon can stop Roche going down. I don't think they can stop it either, frankly, and they can't even really steal it. I mean, what are you, the hell are you going to steal it with? You don't have Blink on a Nick. Oh, they do have Blink on Nick, but they just bought it out, so okay. maybe? But it's going to be a Hail Mary. Yeah. John on the uh, Venomant. He's spotted. <laughs> he wants to do war, but the Rockets just keep on coming in, doing a lot of damage to him. And this vision for the Radiant Team for Rock's Kiss is just, it's really impressive here. The, in, around the Rochamp pit, they're sending out tornadoes, they've got Observer Wards. They did have one in mid lane which just got dewarded, but even with it gone, they've still got some great yeah. control around the Roche pit. I like how Rock's Kiss are playing today, Gods, honestly. I feel like they're playing with, oh, uh, there's a song just to protect the finishing, the, that's really nice. Yeah. We're just, they're playing so mature. Oh, like... they catch Alchemist too with this. Is nice. there a skewer back? Oh, man. Into the pit! <laughs> <gasps> Whoa, Dota! <laughs> Oh, that was pretty Woe Dota. I didn't think he'd get him all the way in the pit. My God. I, I, when, he, when I saw him going that direction, I was like, well, he might get trapped in the trees. I'm surprised they didn't just like do him down towards the ancient down this direction. But well, no, <laughs> they get the kill in the alchemist who still does not have his, he has enough gold for his BKB. So he can buy that. He has not been all that efficient with his Midas uses. And the number of times I've seen this Midas not oh, on yeah. cooldown. I agree. He's, he's trapped. Um, he's trapped between the decision making of are we going to have a fight soon? In which yeah. case, it would be way, 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 way better to nail like a Dark Troll Summoner with it, or a Wild, or a Wild Wing. But as a result, because the fights aren't coming, like it's it's only eight one at twenty minutes, so most of that has been pickoffs. He's leaving it up for a really, really long time, and then being like, "Well, whatever. I guess I'll just use it on any creep." And yeah, he's lost a lot of Midas time. Oh, Rocks gets ready to go high ground here. The Tinker dealing with the Nature's Prophet split push. He can TP back in at any minute. And here he comes. TP's on the Chen creeps. We'll probably lay down the put, well, lay down some rockets to start things off. Then see Marks and Machines to follow it up. And oh, Alchemist in the front lines. He may have a BKB, but he's already down to half HP. Yeah, that. Oh, oh my God. God, the Tinker damage. Uh, this I, I love this Tinker pick, honestly. I feel like Tinker is a hero who's overall not very strong, but he is in that class of heroes who usually shouldn't be picked, but there's the occasional situation in which it just pays off incredibly well. And this feels like that situation to me. It really completely nullified the Weaver mid. Uh, he misses the Skewer Fish for Xe. So yeah. Xe makes it out of this, but Business Perfect is going to hit his Scythe of Vice soon, and that's going to make it very, very difficult for anybody except uh, Illidan to make an impact from Poseidon's side. Yeah, Poseidon are in a bit of trouble here, it looks like. The only real hope, I guess, for them is the ultra late game out. Like, well, not so much ultra late game, because Alchemist can get maxed out around, like, the 35-minute mark, but <laughs> Alchemist plus, like, your Enigma hitting a big black hole. Like, without right. these without these happening, I just don't see... Venomance is very useless. The Weaver as well, very just non-impactful yeah. hero in this game, and I don't think that's about to change anytime soon. No. I mean, he's going... I wonder what this ultimate orb. I, I still feel like this is probably the Lincoln. The oh, they catch up. This is perfect. Oh, nice. there's an RP. <gasps> what wow. a play from Sadoi. There's a screw to fall this up. Is there enough actual damage coming out? It there's doesn't not. look like there is. And as good as that RP was, I think Sadoi is just going to pay for it with his own life as well. And that's a gem as well, taking a getting given away to Poseidon. So they did still manage to pick off C, but losing the gem is a huge deal. I agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Business perfect getting caught out there. Cedar doing his best, but there was only so much he could do, honestly. Meanwhile, middle lane, Alchemist wants to go into the Naga Sark. Nature's Prophet even going to buy back for this kill, it looks like. There's a send back there. Yeah. And 
Chen, well, Chen maybe. Yeah, Chen looks like he's going to take a fall. He needs to pop that mech. Oh, does do so before the stun hits. He can still Hand of God as well. And here comes the Luna with an Eclipse. Hand of God getting used. And Chen keeps himself alive a bit longer. Still ultimately goes down. His life for the Venomancers. And this Luna just straight up fights the Alchemist. Alchemist has no BKB anymore. And Shadow Blade on cooldown for seven seconds. So he's in a bit of trouble here. He's on the Looks run. Looks like they might heal the Aegis off Luna. Yeah, okay. they did. Good, good work there. Well... Respawn coming in a second here. Song of the Siren being used and nice boots of travel to a Chen creep killed off the alchemist. They actually uh, he cast oh. a net as well just to keep him in place while the travels was coming through. Oh, they've got oh no, they're in a lot of trouble. Skewer hitting too. He's got here. a black hole. He's, he's not. He's got no mana for it. Nor does he really want to use it because they've got no damage output. Like Enigma plus uh, Nature's Prophet, they were not going to kill anything there. So I, honestly, they weren't going to kill anything. But at least Nature's Prophet would have gotten out because yeah. he spent a buyback, and now his, his Midas is off cooldown. He's just oh, sitting man. on the sidelines for sixty seconds after spending more than one K for that extremely ineffectual buyback. So that was a pretty disastrous and weird fight for Poseidon overall. Yeah, losing the Alchemist, I didn't, I didn't quite catch that one, but I can imagine just te yeah, teeping to a chain creep and having the Blink Dagger allowing the, the chase to come. And BZZ, he actually didn't buy back that fight. He's just got 2.4k gold all of a sudden. So he's getting close to that Hex, and we're only 24 minutes yeah. into the game. I don't know. I feel like it's really spiraling out of control for Poseidon. And it's a shame. I do think it was... I do think the draft got weirder and weirder as it went. I was like, yeah, all right, all right, all right. What? What? So by the end, they, they came up with yeah. lanes that were okay. I mean, they zoned Seedoy out, but mostly just, I think they didn't reckon with the Tinker. And it's not a common pick, but actually it's a pick that Roxas have gone to before. So uh, maybe a little bit of lack of research. Or yeah, the mid, the mid lane that matchup was definitely their weakness. There. I mean, sure you can say Weaver shouldn't have been dying solo and, and whatnot, but I think even if he does, even if he plays that matchup like the best he, he ever, he possibly could, the draft doesn't work out well for Poseidon. I think if they have like yeah. a puck or something in the middle lane or whatever it may be, this draft makes a whole lot more sense and is much more well-rounded. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think they painted themselves in a few corners, and it's not that the draft has no potential, it's just that the pieces are all a little bit just weirdly shaped. Yeah. Anyway, C is moving towards Scythe of Ice. I think that'll be a good pickup. The issue is Tinker's going to beat him to it by a country mile. So I think the problem for Nature's Prophet is he actually kind of can't show his face in a lane once that Scythe of Ice for Tinker comes up. Even if Tinker isn't carrying a gem, they can put dust on him or something, and every time Nature's Prophet shows his face in lane, he just, he'll just he just die. So despite a 13-4 to 4 kill advantage and a number of towers, this goal, the gold graph is practically even, even slightly in Poseidon's okay. favor. So Alchemist, man. <laughs> yeah, suggesting that this game's still a bit dangerous for Roxkiss. They need to be careful far from in the bag here. They're looking for more pickoffs, and uh oh, Enigma, solo RP being used, and well, every time Sadoi finds a hero, he'll happily use that RP, just one hero, because they know with Enigma on the sidelines, they can take any fight anywhere on the map, so they even if it, even without RP, they still win these team fights. Yeah, and Enigma just isn't, it's so unfun to play Enigma against Magnus, because it's like, it's like hanging out with your like cooler, more successful older brother, right? Yeah. Like, he, he's just better, and he can use his, he can use his ult two times for every one time you use yours, and... The, the jealousy just builds and builds. Solo, I think, is dead, so they do find a kill. Yeah, unfortunately, he couldn't get away from the, the Weaver there. Weaver's still on the run, though. He needs to be careful. He hasn't really got an easy escape. Same for this Alchemist, who has been dusted up. He's got BKB if he needs it. Skewer back. Pops a BKB, and that's going to get rid of, uh, well, the dust for now. The gem, has, has gem been recovered? Or I think the Radiant team, they've just, yeah, they've just lost the gem permanently. Uh, they, the gem, I believe, is in the fountain or something. Yeah. It's not yeah. walking around with it, so... Yeah, gem on the courier. It's right sitting now. on the courier, yeah. So that's that's still that one gem. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's why would you carry it around if you're Poseidon? There's very little incentive to, and you run the risk of just losing it back to Roxkiss. And it's oh, a, yeah. it's such a critical item that gem for Roxkiss because Poseidon has three stealthers, and once Veno goes Shadow Blade, then all bets are off. <laughs> you Enigma as well, of course. Yeah, that's, Shadow Blade Black Hole. Yeah, I mean, five Shadow Blade lineup. He has already picked up the Blink. Uh, which I I agree, terrible item. Way better just go yeah. Shadow Blade. But... I guess you can get. I guess you can go for both. So you blink in, and then you have the Shadow Blade to escape. Is the idea? All right. Yeah. Kind of like a blink blink quap, which I still yeah. miss. Yeah. <laughs> blink quap. We need uh, Demon to uh, come back blink to competitive so Dota. Good. Yeah. I agree. We do. Uh, he's on some like semi. Yeah. Semi he's playing with yeah. Artizi and a few others in that. Yeah. I think one of the, some of these North American tournaments. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think his team's playing against EG today. Hey, that's kind of cool. In what in what tournament? I can't. I think it's maybe the uh, the ESL, the EMS. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I remember seeing just tweets yesterday saying, like, after they won, it's like, oh, we're gonna versus EG tomorrow, and, um, some pe I can't remember exactly what his team's called. I think it's Take 5 is the name of his team. Yeah, I don't, I don't quite remember the name. Oh, a little bit of a Dave Brubeck reference. Pretty, pretty highbrow of them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Illidan, he took a detour for BKB, which I think was absolutely the correct choice. Uh, now you see him moving towards the Assault Cross, and... I don't know, I actually think Poseidon, now that they've stabilized, the main thing is that they prevented Roxas' high ground by eating that Luna Aegis, yeah. and that bought them a lot of time to farm up for their three, for their 4.5 cores, and I like that. I think now they're on a little bit more solid footing, unless Tim gets picked here, I think yeah, he's okay. Yeah, he's, he he's hexed out. There's gonna be a second hex coming from a Blink Tinker. There's, he's a speed piglet, though. Yeah. Well, can he TP out of this one? He knows it's so dangerous to TP. Oh my god! Oh, he's been spotted. Oh! That was a really nice play. He's still not in the clear just yet, I want to say. Well, it's fine, I okay. think. He can even get the courier. No, he can't. Alright, he's safe for now. Luna nearby. This Luna's getting really farmed, though. I mean, you mentioned that Alchemist will farm and somewhat out outscale a Luna, but this Luna has actually kept up with the Alchemist. Only 1,000-ish gold behind, as far as net worth goes. So, in my mind, these two heroes are going to be on par in the late game. Yep. And, I mean, Sidoy, once he has that Refresher Orb and he can cast three uh, RPs for each individual black hole... It will be pretty scary for Poseidon to try to, like, when you're in that position, you are under such tremendous pressure to make that one black hole just win. Like, you have to make sure that one black hole is worth the three RPs, right? And that's a lot of pressure to put on, on one player. Because they really have, like, they're a stun light lineup. They have the AoE stun of the Unstable Concoction, and they have the Periodic stun of the Malefice, and that's it. So they, they're, they rely even more heavily on the black hole, Making it all the more ironic, he hasn't actually cast Black Hole this game. Yeah. Oh. That's... That's... For 30 minutes into the game, like, not even... That's where I feel like when you get these ultimates, like, on Heroes Like Enigma, you just use it for the first solo kill you can find. I'm, I'm, I I heavily advocate just using big... Even high cooldown ultimates for any solo kill you can get early on in, in into the game. Sure. And he had a fast Blink Dagger, too, yeah. which I don't... I don't honestly know how much that has done... Either because... could have just gone straight. Well, I guess BKB. There's a lot that goes through BKB, but Roshan gonna be the next, uh, the next goal for Rock's Kiss here. Thirty minutes in the game, and it looks like they're actually falling further and further behind somehow. Like anyone who looks at this game will be like, okay, Rock's Kiss are getting lots of kills. They've got map control. They're farming well. They've got key items, but they're behind by two K gold. Yep. They will secure the Aegis though, so. Uh... Once they put that on Nexus, as long as they don't really fritter it away the way that they did with Aegis, Aegis number one, I, I think they can present a pretty good threat. That first time they just got caught, I mean, that fight was really bad for Poseidon, or and I said so at the time, but in retrospect it actually wasn't, because they managed to hold off the death push by taking yeah. out the Aegis. So, I don't know. They have a shot. Another death push may be going to be coming in the bottom lane, but... I mean, Roxas had their timing with the BKBs and whatnot, but now he's suddenly looking at much greater item progression coming out from Poseidon. The Assault Crest is there on the Alchemist. The Enigma uh, it had this Blink Dagger for a while, but pushing into a Blink Black Hole always going to be hard, and Weaver does have a Lincoln Sphere now completed, so... He's somewhat resilient Ooh. to these Tinker games. Manta Illusion from Luna. Or no, just just the Manta, and the Illusions from Naga. Well, it's uh, Tier 3 Tower being sieged here. Tinker not even here just yet, but he can always TP in when needed, and yep, there we go. Tinker arrives at the bottom lane. I think it looks like they're just going to keep on sieging this with the uh, the, with the illusion. Renamance are trying to make a, a ward wall here, but we'll see how successful he is. They get slowed down here, but that's it cost them a swarm as well as an unstable concoction, so this next creep wave, maybe Luna goes high ground. Split push is coming from Nature's Prophet, but Tinker already reacting. Yeah, that Tinker can really punish that split push. Now, Xeed actually gets away no problem, and he has a Scythe of Ice, so no. In the period when Tinker had Scythe of Ice and Nature's yeah. Prophet didn't, I think it really favored Tinker, but now it's not so bad for Xeed, and he can present enough of a threat that I think... Oh, here he goes. Oh, Enigma's coming. He's looking for a black hole. He's going to catch out three. Nothing to cancel it. What an initiation coming from Poseidon. The perfect black hole. RP comes, but it's way too late. They've already lost the fight. Luna's going to be respawning with Aegis and will probably just die a second time. Can he get the Enigma? He'll get one. Tinker for this one. Luna with no BKB. Luna going to be brought down. Tinker not even trying to TB back in. Great initiation. The Alchemist went in from like just head on with the Shadow Blade and then the Enigma came in from the side while smoked up and got the perfect engagement with a black hole. It really was. It was an absolutely brilliant black hole. If you're going to have one black hole all game, that's yeah. that's the one to do it. You make it count. It, 
it was really, really excellent play by them. And Poseidon managed to delay the game just long enough that that fight, the, a fight that could have been if they had lost at the end of the game, did they get a second gem? Oh my god, that was the second gem from Roxith that had just come out. So, oh no. uh, But the thing is that they delayed just long enough for, uh, one, the Scythe of Ice on Nature's Prophet, to the Lincolns on Weaver, which was just as important there because Tame My Wild, without that Lincolns, would have dropped at the beginning of that fight and not presented any more DPS. Instead, they had Tame My Wild, they had the uh, Black Hole, everything really just came together. And honestly, I don't know that I'd say that Roxkus are even strategically ahead now. I, I think at this point they're either on somewhat equal terms or even behind, because KSI have this really farmed tricorn now. You've got Nature's Prophet with 3.2k gold on top of his Hex Alchemist, suddenly with 2k gold. He can be looking to pick up his next item, probably something like an Abyssal Blade, Weaver. You're starting to think about a Desolator up. So this item progression is getting really impressive. Naga Siren at bottom lane may have to pop a sleep here. He's looking to kill off this Weaver here. Weaver with time lapse. Are we looking at a Mag RP RP on cooldown for the time being? Tiki. Oh, Kuri goes down. Mag shows up with a skill. Uh oh, Weaver in a bit of trouble here. The Shikuchi going to wear off, and he's got no Shikuchi for a couple of seconds. Double Sentry Wards gets popped, and they get the kill on Weaver at the cost of their own Kuri, though. Yeah, actually, for the Courier, I don't think this is even that atrocious of a trade, because yeah. what are you going to do as Rox gets push? You, you probably can't take a Tier 3 off of this. So they trade a Weaver who probably won't even use buyback for a Courier. Uh, that's a trade I'll take. Yeah. Well... Looks like Roxkiss are pretty adamant that they want to keep go for another push here. I guess Enigma Black Hole is on cooldown while Roxkiss have the Mag RP. So they think, okay, we've got our big ultimate while you guys do not. Let's try and take a fight and even just force a, a buyback from the Weaver. Yeah, if they can force the buyback, then it's a much, much more favorable trade for them. So uh, it makes perfect sense that they would push us five. Yeah. There is no black hole for 35 seconds, too, so actually this timing is quite good. Can they kill oh, this? Oh, Illidan is cut out. He's, he's alright. He's got BKB. He's also got buyback of his own, and yeah. I think Rock's Kiss are going to quickly realize that this push is just not, not going to work. Yeah, it didn't work, and they didn't force the buyback or a uh, a bad black hole. He's got 15 seconds left, so Middle if they're lane, not careful, they can just get nailed again. Dead. He gets solo killed by BZZ. The chain hex Ouch. coming out. That's quite costly. He does a buyback if he needs, but at this point in the game, that's a very expensive buyback. Luna actually popped the BKB at the bottom lane. I think maybe just to dodge an Alchemist stun. Yeah, it looks like he dodged an Unstable Concoction. And, well, I don't know if Rooks just want to hang around for too much longer at this bottom lane, because Black Hole is back up. Yeah, exactly. They don't have Black Hole, and actually, uh, do they have any detection left? I think they may have used all of their detection on uh, Tame My Wild Bottom. So they don't even feel that comfortable here because they don't know when they're going to get initiated on. Yeah. And that's Tinker's the two coming back giving up the two gems. So. Yeah. Oh, Tinker's yes. got four sentries on himself. He just bought them from base. And so if he, he meets up with his team at bottom lane, they can uh, drop those down. But I like how Venomance is actually carrying a gem here. It's actually really useful just to deward sentries. It's going to force Roxkiss to buy so many if they're being constantly dewarded that it's going to eat into their gold. And that's something which Roxkiss, already behind by about 5k, can't really afford to do. Well, Unstable Concoction, nice dodge with the Manta style. Alchemist even popping his BKB there, so that's actually a good start to the fight for Roxkiss here. And can they actually breach this high ground a bit? Luna maybe just going to go for the tower. Hex goes on the Alchemist. Alchemist needs to be careful here. I don't think Roxkiss want to commit too much to this chase here. They back off a little bit. They want to go in this tower. More Hexes coming out from BZZ. The tier 3 tower is going to take a fall. Luna, I think, just wants to back off strategically. Jodem goes down. Double kill for the Luna, killing the Alchemist as well. Now moves on to the Enigma. Enigma without BKB just cannot stand up to this Luna Eclipse. And, well, Luna with a BKB off cooldown doing so much damage. Jodem and the Venomancer get, gets his ultimate off with an Enigma Black Hole. They're going to kill off Luna. And it looks like they're going to get Naga Saren as well. The Naga getting caught there. There was no sleep. Naga could not afford to get caught in that Black Hole. What an absolute nice disaster. Oh, BZZ. Oh, he TP'd out. <laughs> he did TP out, so you saw that interesting little uh, bounce back of the Unstable Concoction. So they save a couple people, and they cause Poseidon to at least spend uh, three, two buybacks? Yeah. It's, but, yeah. yeah. I, it, it's funny. That would have got, How much worse would that have gone for Roxkis if Nexus hadn't had that perfect Manta usage? Yeah. Uh, they forced out a BKB from Alchemist. And uh, so he didn't have BKB by the time this sort of went in, but they split the fight completely. I really think Roxkiss maybe weren't all five of them on the same page, because they ended up being... Like, Magnus wasn't f as nearly as far up as Luna went once she popped Eclipse. Yeah, and so Magnus... Luna and Naga got isolated. Magnus got completely zoned out by the uh, the Weaver. Weaver was, like, all right. the way back near where the T2 tower was. Yeah. But the other... I 
like the, the two black holes in a row, nothing to cancel them. And this is Enigma with no BKB. Like, no BKB, and everybody on the opposing team can cancel yeah. it. Every single person. Like Nagasaren getting caught there with the Luna. Like, what's Nagasaren even on the front? What, like, Nagasaren has no need to be on the front line standing next to the Luna. You're not right. offering much actual damage output. Sure, having a Riptide is nice, but it's by no means essential. It's much more important to have that song to cancel a black hole and save Luna's life. Because yeah. let's say Enigma doesn't catch Nagasaren there. I think Roxas dominate that team fight in the end there. They would come out on top, yeah. maybe even contest for Raxes. I completely agree. And now Business Perfect. I don't know about this from C. Yeah. Uh, did he just feed? He may have. Oh, he just he did the same thing at middle lane as well. Needs another Hex. Here's the Enigma, though. Is it going to be here on time? The mech on C. see There we go. It's a kill. BZZ may pay for this with life. He's trying to TP out. No. Not quite. That was Very close. close, actually. Yeah. So I... not, not as worth it as Tinker was hoping for. Right. Weird trade, honestly. <laughs> from both from both teams. Yeah. Well, buy, buy back from Nature's Prophet. Is it, Roshan not even up, so it looks like he just wants to buy back and go for a fight at middle lane. Looks like Poseidon, for the first time in this game, is just saying they want to go for a push. And, oh, Luna. Caught out. Tinker uh -oh. going to buy back. Great mag RP. What a time to show up. Skewer to the low ground. The tower's here as well. And the damage output from the Alchemist, though, maybe too much to turn this one. To, and we'll actually turn this one around. Luna goes down. Immediate buyback is there. BZZ. It's all up to him maybe on this Tinker. The sleep is there and it's caught the Alchemist. It's caught the Weaver. Hex goes onto the Alchemist in Snare to follow and Alchemist is in trouble. He's got no buyback, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, his buyback's on cooldown Three and they minutes. lose him. Nature's Prophet, no buyback. That was a terrible, terrible fight for Poseidon. They were ahead and all of a sudden a fight like that, an RP like that, and then suddenly yeah. they're not looking too good. I, I mean, let's give Sidor the credit that he's due for that because that was all him. Yes. That, that may have turned out to be a very bad fight for Poseidon. In fact, all, it may be fatefully bad. As long as they can hold off the split push from Weaver, I think they get racks off this. Um, but that could have been horrible for Roxkis. Nexus was so incredibly close to dying. He was really, I would say, a little bit out of position on the high ground there. But Seadoy, just a miraculous RP on three or four. I think on four. Yeah, I think it was four. They're going to get the ensnare off on the, the Weaver now. Weaver just straight up died. Uh oh. He's. He's got buyback, so he's buying time here. He's trying to prevent double Raxus going down, because they're going to lose at least one set of Raxus, but Roxkis want both middle lane as well as bottom. And it looks like they are going to get both lanes. I don't think there's... No Prophet, no, no Alchemist. They, they have got a Black Hole, but chances of getting a Black Hole off and actually doing anything without those two damage-dealing heroes is very unlikely. I, I agree. I think at the very least it's the melee. Yeah, still 15 seconds for Alchemist. This is two free lanes yeah. for Roxkis. That's how much can turn on a big team fight at the 40 minute mark. You you get RP'd once in a position that you're not happy with, and goodbye two sets of Raxas. They don't actually get the range Raxas, and those do regen pretty fast. So I think that's actually, I mean, it's, it's obviously the melee Rax is more important, but range Raxas ultimately do matter quite a lot in the in the long term as far as getting mega creeps. So that's Poseidon true. do have those to hold on to, but we'll see the next fight maybe happen really soon over this Roshan pit. Yeah. It is cheese. So, so many heroes have used buyback recently. Yeah, let's say, who's actually got buyback? Absolutely no Chen. one except Chen. Look how many <laughs> is on cooldown. Venomancer, Mag, Weaver, Luna, Alchemist, Prophet, and Tinker. All these heroes that's do insane. not have buyback. That's 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 really, really crazy. And it does mean that if, if a big fight breaks out, the team that wins could just oh, win. Alchemist, he's <gasps> caught out at bottom lane. He pops a BKB before he can get Hex here. Nagasara needs to maybe sleep this one. All right. He's going to be okay here. Do they look to turn this around? They've got a lot of heroes showing up. Meanwhile, on the back lines, KSI is actually TP'd in. They're going to focus on Nature's Profit. What oh, a no. disaster for Poseidon. Alchemist RP's doesn't have BKB. Available. Sedoi with another heroic RP catches out too. This is the end for Poseidon. I think with a fight like that, I don't think they can hold once more. This is... This is GG. 40, they have 40 seconds for the buyback of Alchemist. Three minutes for Nature's Profit. Oh, so, no. I don't see why Roxas doesn't just go for Megas here. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, there's or go for the throne. They uh, go for the uh, throne yeah, just instead. Throw it. Yeah. Yeah, they'll get the range Raxus just to be safe. And they'll probably start working on these Tier 4 Towers and Throne. Even if they don't get the throne, just getting the Tier 4 Towers for the gold and the strategic advantage is going to be well worth it. For sure. And uh, they'll do Once just the that. Once the Tier 4s are down, you, you just can't leave your base, period. Because there's always super creeps marching in and hitting your Ancient. Well... This is, this is, I think, the end for Poseidon. They're going to lose the Tier 4 Tower. Still, Alchemist, how long on that buyback? Three seconds, it's up. I think this is just the last stand for Poseidon. They know maybe they can do something with this. Enigma with the BKB, but he can't find a black hole. He's empty. Oh, no. Enigma. Oi, 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 oi. Sakura goes down, and Poseidon, with that, their hopes in this Game 1 victory go down. Rocks kiss, take it. 
in a very entertaining and close fashion. Yeah, to be fair, Sakura um, had some pretty great black holes that game. Yeah. And sure, that last one wasn't great. It was, uh, they'd already lost at that point. It exactly. Was like, they, there was absolutely no chance that he pulled Rock's, that game back. Rock's Kiss know, knows it's coming as well. So he's like, okay, this guy's looking for a four or five man black hole to try and uh, have one last heroic defense. But they're like, no, not, not going to happen. Make him look like a fool. But really, I'd say the Enigma all in all played a pretty decent game. He did. Uh, Poseidon, considering the absolute... Were they... Wackiness beyond wackiness of the draft. They, they were playing so like three v five. It felt like well, at, at best four v five. Venomata, yeah. what did he actually do? He oh, carried right. around. He carried around a gem and he medallion people. <laughs> okay, okay. He did land two pretty good Venomancer ultimates. Uh, like that big fight they won, he landed an ultimate on pretty much everybody because he followed up the black hole. But with does it. it actually do that much damage? Like a level two Venom ultimate at forty minutes in the game is good not, point. Yeah, is not that much damage. There's <laughs> a true. there's a Chen with Mech as well as Hand of God that yeah, okay. more than negates that damage. It feels like um, Luna has Life Seal, so that that actual Poison Nova does very very little. Yeah, that's that's definitely a good point. The Weaver started cool. off slow. I, I think Weaver came back pretty well, but. Ultimately, never was actually doing any damage. Didn't finish the Death Slayer, just had a Lincoln Sphere. Uh, the damage output wasn't really there for the for the Weaver, unfortunately. Well, with that, Poseidon, that's their uh, opening match. There's 0 1. Rock's Kiss. This is like a dream start for them. They're 3 0 in Group D. Oh, yeah. They're doing very, they're definitely doing great. I think it's uh, kind of nice. To, like, they have their easiest matchups first, and then it's like Navi Fnatic last. So all they have to do is win like one of those four games, like one game in two best of twos, and they're. At at, wor at worst, they finished tied for second place, I believe. So yeah, that's I mean that's a lot less pressure on them if you're going into your last matches knowing, hey, we only need to win one game against either Navi or Fnatic. Yeah, and I th I think Roxkis can definitely give Fnatic a run for their money at the very least, even if not Navi. I think Roxkis has traditionally had a, a a pretty hard time beating Navi. All right. Well, thanks for joining me, Vikramon. We've got one more game for those of you wondering who's uh, been casting. I'm Gods, and joining me is Vikramon. You can follow him on Twitter, Facebook, and everywhere else uh, at Vikramon. Myself, I'm uh, twitter.com slash btsgods. But we'll have game two coming up after a short break.